This is our second session on the book of Job. And we saw last time that here in chapter 1, verse 6 to 8, there was no one like Job, God said. The Lord said, there's no one like him. He's blameless. He's upright. He fears God. He turns away from evil. And therefore, what's about to happen to Job is not owing to Job's failures. It's not owing to Job's sinning. And we saw that God is the one who is drawing attention to Job and who is testing his heart for whether his heart will cherish God, love God, treasure God, fear God, trust God as God for God or for his gifts. Because Satan's challenge is, Satan answered the Lord, does, does, does Job fear God for no reason, for nothing? In other words, there's good payoff. Like, you put a hedge around him. All of his house you protect. Everything he has. On every side. You've made life so easy for him. He loves stuff. You've blessed the work of his hands. You've given him possessions. You've increased in uh, everything that he has. But here's the temptation. Here's the accusation. You stretch out your hand and touch all that he has. He'll curse you to your face. So there's the issue. This book is about the value of God over against the gifts of God. That's what the book is testing. That's what the book is about. That's what needs to be confirmed in Job's blameless soul. So the Lord says to Satan, look, all that he has now is in your hand. And so God, as it were, can yield over to Satan, up to a point, do not stretch out your hand against him, only his possessions. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. So God is sovereign over Satan and sets his limits. Now what's going to happen? Now there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And there came a messenger to Job and said, this is number one, the oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding beside them and the Sabaeans fell upon them and took them and struck down the servants with the edge of the sword and I alone have escaped to tell you. So the donkeys and the oxen are gone and the servants are dead. Next. While he was still speaking, there came another and said, Two, the fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I alone have escaped to tell you. I assume this is lightning. Could be something more miraculous, but some kind of fire fell. And he calls it the fire of God and killed all the sheep and all those shepherds. And while he was still speaking, there came another and said, number three, the Chaldeans. So first you're dealing with the Sabaeans, then you're dealing with the fire of God. Now we're dealing with the Chaldeans, formed three groups and made a raid on the camels and took them and struck down the servants with the edge of the sword and I alone have escaped to tell you. So now all the camels are gone. The servants are gone, the sheep are gone, and the oxen are gone, and the donkeys are gone. And now, while he was yet speaking, there came another and said, Your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house, and behold, a great wind came across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young people, and they are, all of them, all ten, are dead. And I alone have escaped to tell you. Number four. What is happening? 
What is happening? Sabians. Sabians. Fire of God. Chaldeans. Wind. So God said, Behold, all that he has, Satan, is in your hand. Only against him do not stretch out your hand. So Satan went out, and the result was that all the oxen are gone, all the donkeys are gone, the servants are gone, all the sheep are gone, the servants are dead, all the camels are gone, and all the children are gone. And the immediate cause, Sabaeans, lightning, Chaldeans, wind. So who's doing this? And we would say, well, God gave Satan permission. So what? Satan controls the lightning. Satan controls the wind. Everywhere in the Bible, God controls the wind. Satan certainly can put it in the hearts of pagan Sabaeans and pagan Chaldeans to raid. He could do that. But lightnings, wind, these are in the power of God. Unless, of course, he gets permission from God, which is what happened, evidently. But two things are really important to notice here. The servant calls it the fire of God, not the fire of Satan, not the fire of nature. Now, the question is, was the theology of the servant correct? Should he have attributed this to God? And here's the other factor. In chapter 2, verses 1 to 3, which we'll look at next time, God says to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil? He still holds to his integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him without reason. So God says that he was behind the Sabaeans, the fire, the Chaldeans, and the wind. You incited me. In other words, however we look at it, Satan is weak. That is, he can't do anything without God. He doesn't control the lightning. He doesn't control the wind. He can't decisively make the Sabaeans and Chaldeans do anything except as God gives him leash. And God said, Satan incited me against Job and Job is still holding fast. Now, we haven't seen that yet. We didn't go beyond verse 19. We're stopping here. But I just wanted to set this up so that we can see what Job is responding to. What is Job going to say? He has just lost everything except his wife and his health. And she's going to turn on him and his health is going to be taken away. But right now, he has lost all of his children. He has lost all of his possessions. And his servants have been slaughtered. What is he going to do? And what the, the writer of this book has shown us so far is that while Satan came into the presence of God, it was God who initiated the focus on Job. It was God who gave Satan freedom and leash to go out from his presence and put all things into his hand. And then it was God who turned around and said, You've incited me against him because God knows and we know that God is absolutely sovereign over everything Satan does so that nothing that Satan does is beyond God's control. How will Job respond to this? Will he, as James said, be steadfast in his love, in his fear of God? 
even though the gifts of God have been stripped from his hand.